the observable universe, the approximate number of galaxies is estimated at 2 trillion. So it seems evident that distant worlds should be inhabited by intelligent civilizations capable of developing radio astronomy and interstellar travel. However, unfortunately, our radio telescopes do not detect any voices from other worlds. And as we gaze into the cosmic ocean, we don't see any signs of extraterrestrial technologies. Where is everybody? Is a question posed by Italian-American scientist Enrico Fermi. We discuss the paradox named after him and possible solutions to the puzzle of the existence of other civilizations in our previous video, which you can find with the tips in the upper right corner. Today, we want to tell you about the most intriguing possible explanation for our apparent loneliness in the universe, the Great Filter. Sit back, relax, and let's begin. The Great Filter Hypothesis was proposed by Robin Hansen, a researcher at the Future of Humanity Institute at the University of Oxford. In 1996, he published an essay titled The Great Filter, Are We Almost Past It?, in which he suggested that there are processes in the universe that prevent the transformation of non-living matter into living matter and the achievement of a high level of technological development. Here's what Hansen wrote. Humanity seems to have had a great opportunity to fill the universe with life, but if you take into account that the space around us is dead, it is not certain that humans will be able to do this. It turns out that there is some kind of filter in space that determines whether life will appear or not in a particular place, and if it does, how long its development will last before it disappears. Another question arises, have we passed this filter ourselves, or is it still ahead of us? So, according to the concept of the Great Filter, advanced extraterrestrial life forms must overcome numerous critical steps, one of which is highly improbable. The premise of the Great Filter lies in the existence of at least one obstacle that hardly any species can overcome to proceed to the next stage of development. Let's take a look at them. A planet on which life can exist must be located in the habitable zone. The habitable zone for a planet, also known as the life zone or zone of sustaining life, is a specific area around a star where conditions are considered suitable for the existence of liquid water on the planet's surface. This zone is a region in space where the temperature allows water to exist in a liquid state, which is considered an essential factor for the emergence and maintenance of life as we know it on Earth. Extraterrestrial life forms must be capable of reproduction using molecules such as DNA and RNA. The assumption that extraterrestrial life forms may be capable of reproduction using DNA and RNA molecules is based on the principle of chemical and biological universality. These acids serve as carriers and storers of genetic information, encoding the hereditary characteristics of the organism. They have the ability to accurately replicate themselves during reproduction, and their structure is based on a universal genetic code that determines how genetic information is translated into proteins and organism functions. Due to this chemical and biological universality, it is assumed that other life forms in the universe, if they exist, could develop similar molecular mechanisms for storing genetic information and reproduction. Simple cells must evolve into more complex cells and then into multicellular organisms. This development is necessary because multicellular organisms have greater opportunities for specialization, collaboration, and the evolution of complex social structures. Furthermore, the evolution into more complex cells and organisms may lead to the development of more sophisticated nervous systems and intelligence. The development of intelligence is a key factor in the ability to create and use technologies, which in turn can lead to the development of civilization. Complex organisms capable of using tools must evolve. This obviously expands the possibilities for the survival and reproduction of organisms, which may be important for the development of complex ecosystems and civilizations. Organisms must create advanced technologies necessary for space colonization while avoiding self-destruction. Humanity is approximately at this stage. So, what is the Great Filter? The Great Filter is not a specific event that determines whether a civilization will emerge or not. 
Abiogenesis, the process of turning non-living matter into life, is quite unusual. It may rarely occur in the universe, making it the great filter. On the other hand, life may arise spontaneously, but the vast majority of living organisms remain limited to simple, single-celled forms. Certainly, the universe may be teeming with bacteria, but bacteria do not build spacecraft. The Great Filter may also result from the existence of technologies. Developed civilizations might self-destruct using some technology, such as artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, or a doomsday machine. Look at us. We are more than capable of annihilating ourselves through global thermonuclear war. Unfortunately, such extinction events are likely to be widespread throughout the cosmos. The Great Filter could also be an external event, independent of the civilization's advancement. For example, a collision with a giant asteroid or a wandering planet, a nearby gamma-ray burst or a supernova explosion could potentially wipe out all life on Earth or any other planet, for that matter. The last question remains. Has humanity passed the Great Filter? If the Great Filter lies behind us, it bodes well for humanity as a biological species. For instance, we could colonize the universe, but if the Great Filter is ahead of us, then we are likely doomed. For this reason, some researchers interpret our apparent loneliness in the universe as a good sign, even a blessing, as it suggests that we have safely passed through the Great Filter. Strangely enough, we might be the first species to do so. After all, someone has to be the first. On the other hand, if we detect a signal from a highly technologically advanced civilization, it may mean that the Great Filter is still ahead. Humanity might be in for an unexpected cosmic test. What exactly we need to prepare for? No one knows. Undoubtedly, the Great Filter is just a theory, but it is an incredibly appealing idea, fully capable of explaining the Fermi Paradox. Although the question, where is everybody, still lacks an answer, the Great Filter Theory offers one of the best speculations one can come up with. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. Write in the comments what you would like to see in the next video. Thank you, and see you next time.